What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. As we slowly come out of the quarantine, I thought it'd be nice to take a look at some hotels. Not normal hotels. I'm not a travel agent. Haunted hotels. I've never been a big fan of haunted stuff, but I guess most of the internet is. Anytime I throw haunted or mysterious on the front of a video, it gets extra views. For some reason, people love hauntings. Now, I find the stories interesting, especially when they're from like the colonial period. Those do pique my interest, I don't know why. But more often than not, hauntings are in homes, hotels, inns, and brothels for some reason. You never hear of like a gas station being haunted or a visitor's dugout of a little league field being haunted. And it does always seem to be from the 1800s or the 1700s. You never hear of someone saying that their home is haunted by some sloped forehead Neanderthal with a spear. Always trying to create fire in their living room. Out of all the things haunted, hotels are always the best and have the greatest backstories and legends. And that's what we're looking at today. One with great backstories and legends. A couple that should be on this list, but won't be. It's because I've talked about them before and we'll be doing other videos about them in the near future. And those would be the White Eagle Hotel and Saloon here in Portland, Oregon, and my favorite hotel, the Hotel Wayne in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. Both are great hotels with solid history. All right, let's check out part one of the most haunted hotels in the United States. Number 10, the Weinkauf Hotel, Atlanta, Georgia. The Weinkauf Hotel, which is now called the Ellis Hotel, is a 15-story building that opened in 1913. At the time, it was the best place to stay in Atlanta. Back in the day, hotels weren't very safe, no matter how nice they were. Hotel fires were always in the press. The Weinkauf advertised itself as the first absolutely fireproof hotel. And then on December 7th, 1946, they had a fire that killed 119 people. I guess it was absolutely fireproof for 33 years. Early in the morning of December 7th, 1946, a fire broke out on one of the lower floors in this filled capacity hotel. Of the 304 guests in the hotel that night, more than one third died. 119 people lost their lives and it was the deadliest hotel fire in U.S. history. A survivor recounted being awakened and made aware of the fire by the sound of people screaming. It is said that the first engine and ladder company arrived within 30 seconds of the phone call. They were there right away. But by this time, people were already jumping out of windows because of the fire. And I'm not talking the second story. Way up. Like most hotels in Atlanta in those days, it had no sprinkler system and no outside fire escapes. It had been built with a staircase winding around the enclosed bank of elevators in the center of the building. That was it. These were the only two methods of getting down from the upper floors. Actually, three. There was the elevator, there was the stairs by the elevator, and there was jumping out of the window. People chose to jump out of the window. It was never thought to have been a haunted hotel prior to the 1946 fire, but things changed. Guests and staff have reported seeing apparitions running up the stairs, seeing ghosts leaning out the windows, smelling mysterious smoke, and hearing screaming in the hallways late at night. The fire alarm sometimes goes off at 2.48 a.m., which is the exact time the suspected arson happened. Yes, they suspect somebody actually set this place on fire. Among the dead was W. Frank Weinkoff. He was the original owner of the building. He had a suite on the 10th floor. He had sold the building in 1937, and he continued to live there in his retirement, insisting to the day that he died that this was Atlanta's finest hotel and it was completely fireproof. Guess again, W. Frank. Number 9. The Oxford Hotel, Denver, Colorado. The Oxford Hotel was built in 1891. It is Denver's oldest hotel and has some spooky legends in its history. Until the 1930s, the Oxford was a really nice place to stay, by 1930 standards at least. In the 1950s, the Oxford Hotel was considered a run-down flophouse, like a place for hobos and hippies, one elderly gentleman told me. I didn't want to let him in on the fact that hippies really weren't a thing until the 1960s, but he was doing some serious drinking and he was kind of on a roll, so I just let it go. In the 1980s, a new owner puts money into the place and turned it around. These days, it's a really nice place to stay from what I understand. I've never stayed there, but I've seen the hotel. Anyway, back to the scary stories. In 1898, a woman named Florence shot and killed her lover before taking her own life in room 320. Since then, single male guests who stay in room 320 have reported their sheets being ripped off the bed and their arms being pulled up over their head by an unseen force. Sounds like she liked it a little weird. But the scary stuff doesn't end in 320. Bartenders routinely report a man walking into the bar wearing an old postal carrier's uniform. 
He always orders a beer before muttering the children. I have to get the gifts to the children. He appears to drink the beer and then leaves, but the bartenders pick up the bottle and it's still full. Nobody drank the beer. Research has revealed a story of a postal worker from the 1930s who was on his way to deliver Christmas presents in nearby Central City, but the gifts were never delivered. That spring, his decomposed body was found on the way to Central City with all the Christmas gifts still with him. That drink at the bar may have been his last. If you're ever over there, uh, there's a nice seafood place directly across the street. Like, it's really nice. Number 8. The Congress Plaza Hotel, Chicago, Illinois. The hotel is frequently noted as one of the most haunted buildings in Chicago. The 14-story hotel was opened in 1893 and now features 871 guest rooms and suites. I've stayed here twice. I didn't see anything spooky. I just saw a couple of drinks in the inside of my eyelids. It was a nice night. Actually, nice couple nights each time. The landmark of Chicago hospitality was originally built over 100 years ago to accommodate visitors coming to the Chicago World Fair in 1893. The hotel didn't actually become the Congress Plaza until 1908. It is rumored that one of the most notorious residents was gangster Al Capone. It is said that he lived here for some time. Some reports say that he owned the hotel for a while and used it as a headquarters for his illegal activities. Truth be told, Scarface never actually stayed here or owned it, unless... It was under an assumed name or a shell company type thing. Maybe. I mean, he was a gangster and all. They do things like that. Anyway, that hasn't stopped guests from seeing him walking the hallways late at night in his wingtip shoes and his famous pinstripe suit. And there's another thing. Those ghosts seeing hotel guests say that he's in a pinstriped suit all the time. There's no real evidence he was big into pinstripes. That's just Hollywood. Every picture you ever see of the dude, he was just in a normal suit. Nice suit. He looked like a sharp dresser, but it was never looked like he was always in a pinstripe suit. It's weird. Anyway, there's another story about a worker who got buried behind a wall when the hotel was being built. These days, he's just referring referred to as the hand of mystery because his gloved hand supposedly sticks out of the wall in the closet behind the balcony in the gold room. So this hand comes out of the wall and just sit there looking for something, just holding his hand out. I mean, if you saw a hand sticking out of a wall inside a closet, would you give it a high five? I know I would. There is someone else haunting the halls of Congress Plaza. The homeless hobo, Peg Leg Johnny. Here we are with the hobos again. Anyway, he's said to have been murdered at the hotel many years ago, and now they could hear him shuffling and clacking and shuffling and clacking. You know, the shuffling of the foot, then the clack of the peg leg. Yeah, that's weird. As for other legends, there's a lone man roams the eighth floor where the elevator is said to stop frequently, even though there's no one there. To push the button, it just stops. And then voices can be heard in the ballroom, even if no one's there. These hotel hauntings really sound like something Stephen King wrote. It really does. It's said not to book room 441 if you plan on staying in the Congress Plaza. Security is called to this room more than any other room. Guests report seeing the same thing. A shadowy outline of a woman staring at them. That'll make you sleep good. But the biggest scare is saved for the 12th floor where there is said to be a room so frightening that the door was glued and nailed shut from the outside. It is also rumored that there's a secret 15th floor closed off to the population because they've got so much bad juju floating around that hallway. Yeah, it's kind of spooky. I never saw anything, but it is an old creepy building. Number seven, the Hotel Sorrento, Seattle, Washington. About a mile east of Pike Place Market, and the docks where you board your cruise ships, you find the Hotel Sorrento. Even from the front, this place looks a little spooky. The Hotel Sorrento opened in 1909 and was named a Seattle landmark in 2010. Even back in the early 1900s, Seattleites were big weed supporters. Alice B. Toklas was credited with the invention of the pot brownie back in 1954. Today, she is credited with roaming the halls of the Hotel Sorrento, specifically the fourth floor, and even more specifically, room 408. You'd think it would be room 420, but I guess she likes 408. She has been seen dressed in white or black and is said to have caused lights to flicker and drinks to move around in the Dunbar room. It's unclear why she haunts this hotel. It's unlikely she ever walked its halls or stayed there. The hotel was an upscale place back in the day, and I'm thinking she wasn't. It seems like the hotel digs her presence. On October 26, 2018, the hotel hosted a dinner event in her honor. The dinner was inspired by recipes from Alice B. Toklas' cookbook, which, as you can imagine, is quite a cookbook. After the dinner, there was a tour of the property, including the sites of reoccurring hauntings. The hotel even has a drink on their menu named the Miss Toklas. The thing about this haunting is that by 
By most accounts, she's just there, sort of mellow and occasionally turning a light on or off and moving something around slightly. She doesn't really bother anyone. She's just there. And if you look at the old pictures from her, I don't know if it's shading or what, but it looks like she had one of those Charlie Chaplin Hitler mustaches going on for some time in the 1940s and 50s. That's a little uncomfortable. Number six, the Driscoll Hotel, Austin, Texas. This is the oldest operating hotel in Austin and is one of the best known hotels in Texas. It's also Austin's most famous haunted space and is infested with so many ghosts, the hotel staff actually has a handout so you know who you're looking at when they come to your room and bother you. It is a Romanesque style building completed in 1886 and it's the oldest operating hotel in Austin, Texas. It is a little gaudy by today's architectural standards, but back in the day it was just right. The Driscoll is actually two interconnected buildings. The original four-story building was constructed in 1886 and a 13-story annex constructed in 1930. The hotel was named after Civil War Colonel Jesse Driscoll, who had the place built and then promptly lost it in a card game. He still haunts the halls today and he makes his presence known with the scent of cigar smoke, especially in rooms occupied by lone women. So besides being a bit of a gambling man, the colonel seemed to be a bit of a perv, even in the afterlife. I mean, if you can't get in trouble for it in the afterlife, would you do it? I mean, I don't know if they have any social justice warriors in the afterlife, but I mean, if there's no consequences for your actions, would you be a perv? I don't know. A spirit that might or might not be Driscoll has been reported to operate the elevators, move furniture, push guests out of their beds, and hide their belongings. <laughs> How messed up is that? You get out, you can't find your glasses, they're in the toilet. <laughs> it's just, yeah, nothing like a ghost with a good sense of humor. Then there's the creepy suicide brides who killed themselves in the same bathtub in the same room, 20 years apart, to the day, in room 525. Stay out of that one. There's a story of a young girl who died in 1887 after chasing her ball and actually falling down the grand staircase. She roams the hallways, no word on the ball, or if she ever found it. But the Driscoll is definitely one of the most haunted places that I've ever read about. It goes on and on and on. I could spend an hour just on the Driscoll alone. You should look it up and read some of the stories they have of that place. It's pretty weird. All right, so that is part one of the Most Haunted Hotels video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Part two will be out tomorrow. Don't forget all the links below. Give the video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you like what we're doing here. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.